Walt Disney may have created some of the most magical places on Earth, but if you're a real speed freak, going to the Magic Kingdom and riding the roller coasters just ain't gonna do it. You need to really get your heart racing, and I can think of no better example of doing that than by being behind the wheel of a hot hatchback. Now, while a lot of the legends that I grew up with in my younger days have moved on, the game is still alive and well here in the modern day. And that's especially true if you have around 40 to 50,000 US dollars to spend. Honda has the Civic Type R, Acura has the Integra Type S, and even Volkswagen still has the GTI and Golf R twins. But as for Toyota, all they have to offer us is a Corolla? Corolla though <laughs> because this oh this is the Gazoo Racing Corolla god what a car Whoa! <laughs> this is not like any Corolla you will ever drive nor will ever know in your life this isn't just an Econo box that's had a few little jalapenos stuffed up its back end. This is a Carolina Reaper. This is the spiciest, the hottest, the most mind-numbing Corolla you will ever drive if you ever get the chance to get behind the wheel of one, which might not be that much of a possibility considering for this 2023 model year, they only made 200 of these. But if you got the chance to get your hands on one, you may already know what this little car is capable of. This isn't just a hot hatch anymore. It's an all-wheel drive, 300 horsepower, three-cylinder super hatch. This car has graduated to the next level. This car is wound up to the maximum in every single way. Its all-wheel drive system can be split either 60% to the front and 40 in the rear, or if you feel a little bit more ambitious, well, you can go 70% to the back and 30% in the front. Well, you know, this car is also meant for the track. So if you feel that sort of notion coming on, put this car in the track mode through the GR4 selector here in the middle, and all of a sudden, it is a $40,000 rally car. <laughs> oh my God, I can't get enough of this thing. It is just it's right on the knife edge when you turn the steering wheel. There's no play in it at all. And then of course, it only comes with a six speed. Need I say any more than that? But it isn't just any ordinary six speed because this has one of the best manual transmissions I've ever driven. The six speed in this car, it slots home perfectly every single time and what's even better is you might find yourself granny shifting not double clutching like you should every once in a while so this has an intelligent manual transmission mode where it will rev match every single upshift and downshift you throw at it which means oh it is It is so close to perfect, I don't even know if I could call it anything less. But what's crazy about this particular one, the base end core model, is that after living with this thing for a week and primarily using it as my daily driver just to get back and forth to work, I realized that even as hardcore and brash and analog as this car might feel, it is actually very easy to live with. I mean, yeah, it's a Toyota Corolla, whatever you expect, but, as I've found out, 
it may have all the circuit tuned goodies that Gazoo Racing can throw at it, like a much firmer suspension that won't exactly turn your spine into dust, but one that is perfectly suited for more hardcore driving. But as you just putz around town at 30 miles an hour, or maybe you might get on the freeway and crank it up to 60 or 65, this car is just, it's comfortable. And that's not something I ever thought I would say about a legitimate hot hatch. Now you don't buy one of these cars to brag to your friends about getting over 30 miles to the gallon. You can buy one of these cars so you can brag to your friends that all it takes is one little flick of the trigger, put this car in sport mode, keep that intelligent manual transmission going, and then What the I need a minute. Now, if your heart rate hasn't come down from the stratosphere after experiencing the roller coaster ride this car can provide, well, just stepping out for a moment and taking a look at it, might as well make it flatline. This is, and I don't say this lightly, not just the most aggressive Toyota Corolla you can buy, it is the most over the top and in your face hot hatch you can buy right now. And this little guy in front of us is even more spicy thanks to the optional supersonic red paintwork. But while things like the color or the fact that this car barely resembles the standard Corolla hatchback on which it's based might be a talking point for some, it seems that the the main one at Gazoo Racing was that girth is more important than its length. This car is over six feet wide at its widest point, making it not only 72.8 inches wide overall, but it is 2.7 inches wider than a standard Corolla hatch. And you can pretty much tell where all of that went. This car has really thrown the idea of a diet out the window. Okay, I'm done with the food puns, but you can see these huge fender flares sticking out fore and aft, and those are integrated with these nice little air skirts that help this car slip through the air as you race around the track or along your local freeway. And of course, you will intimidate people on said surfaces as well with the monstrous blacked out grill sitting here in the front. But all the same, there are some standard things you would find on a regular Corolla, albeit styled a little differently, like the LED fog lights and my favorite iteration of the new Corolla headlights. They've always been aggressive, but I love how now they've combined the LED turn signals and daytime running lights into one solid piece. They kind of alternate between each other. And then of course you have your LED high and low beams with auto high beam assist. This car also comes standard with the full Toyota Safety Sense system. And even the little details are enough to impress like the little nostrils that are hiding on either side of the Toyota badge. While the GR Corolla may be a bit thicker at the hips than your average Corolla hatch, it's not exactly much longer than one. At 173.6 inches long, this car is 1.6 inches longer than the Corolla hatch you might find in your neighbor's driveway. Now I know I say every inch counts, but here it doesn't look like it makes too much of a difference, but what really does, hiding underneath its massive haunches, are the 18 inch matte black finished wheels coming as standard. Now they are wrapped in 235 40 series Z rated Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tires. And not only are those tires incredibly sticky, they don't really have much poke to them. The fit on this car is very, very solid. And as if to add a bit of bling under the blackness, you look underneath and you can see a little shimmer from those upgraded drilled and slotted rotors thanks to the optional performance package here on my test car. Now, while admiring this car's hip line may be one thing, 
Looking at it from a financial perspective, knowing you're spending over $40,000, it doesn't exactly sound like the best decision to go for the core model because you really aren't getting a whole lot in terms of creature comforts, but that shouldn't be a negative with the GR Corolla in general. This is a driver's Corolla. Two words I never thought would go together. But as you walk past the voluptuous hip line, at least here in the front, you'll notice subtle things like the gloss black vents here in the front with a nice little GR badge for an accent. You have the gloss black mirrors, which not only have turn signals in the side and blind spot monitoring. These are things you would find on a rudimentary Corolla XSE. But one thing you won't find on this core model that you might find on your regular Corolla is a sunroof, but it is completely unnecessary in this car. You don't need one of those to make one of these perfectly livable. What might be a nice little add-on is the fact that every GR Corolla not only comes with its own signature key fob, but it, they all come with standard keyless access. And as you can see, there's really not much buttony going on here. You have lock, unlock, and panic with the releasable keyblade used for unlocking the car manually through the external keyholes, which I'm really happy to see on this car. No hidden keyholes hidden under the door handle that you have to play a game of Tetris just to find. Now the car is currently unlocked at the moment, so if you wanna lock it, there's a little rib on the front of the handle. And if you wanna unlock it, just have the key with you and get in as normal. Now, if you thought the front of this car was curvy enough, you start looking at it from the rear and hello booty. The rear of this thing is wide. Now, it's not the widest thing you'll ever find on a hot hatch, but that rear bumper looks like the same one you would find on a World Rally Championship car, which is kind of apt considering this is an all-wheel drive hot hatch with a bit of rally bred heritage behind its modern day name. Now, yes, you can still tell it's a Toyota Corolla, not just by the Corolla name pasted there on the trunk, but you look at the tail lights. They're LEDs just like the front. You've got the LED main lights, turn signals, and reverse lights, which I must admit, I like the black accenting on these a lot more than just the standard Corolla rear lights. Of course, you've got other rudimentary things like your backup camera, but we all know what the best part of this car is from the rear, that triple tip exhaust, which even at idle, this thing sounds ungodly. Of course, the benefit of a hot hatch isn't just the ability to blow your hair away every time you go near the gas pedal. These things are meant to be pretty practical at the same time. And the GR Corolla demonstrates that pretty solidly, if I may say so, with 17.8 cubic feet of usable cargo volume behind the split fold rear seats. Now let's say that number is just not enough. You take out the cargo cover here, fold down those back seats, and now you're looking at 36.6 cubic feet of cargo volume, which sounds very admirable, especially considering the overall size of the car. But there are a couple of things I must point out. That roof line being so low, you aren't going to be vending fitting very many tall objects in here and if you're worried that this floor is a bit too high well it's for a reason your battery's under there your tire inflation kit and in this case a front license plate bracket but I'll leave that in there because who wants to ruin the face of their hot hatchback with a metal registration tag Now, while this car may certainly sound like a modern hot hatch and it definitely looks as crazy as one as well under the skin this is still a Toyota Corolla, a name that evokes images of boring rental cars and econo boxes, right? Well, the GR is far from anything as such, and you can tell this car was built to be a driver's car. On the same token, you can also tell we're in the base model here with the manually adjustable cloth bucket seats, which have just the right amount of bolstering. And thanks to the optional cold weather package on my test car, they are heated. And the same goes with the leather rim of the GR specific steering wheel with about as many buttons as you could possibly imagine for one, but it too is heated thanks to that same optional extra. Now, as far as your controls on the wheel, it is like any modern Toyota you want, voice recognition, 
Bluetooth, and your full Toyota Safety Sense system, which also includes the same more necessary option, I would say, that I've seen in a lot of other modern day products. And that is the mode button here for your Toyota Safety Sense, which alternates between the adaptive radar cruise and a regular cruise control function if per se you just don't want the car interfering too much. With the performance goodies out of the way, you can still see evidence of this still being a regular Toyota Corolla, just like any other one you might find in the family. In front of you is a 12.3 inch high definition, multicolor information display. Again, just a fancy term for a digital gauge cluster, and it is configurable any way you want. With a central mounted tachometer that not only has your gear indicator underneath it, but it can be changed from a more round tachometer to a thin little strip, just like you would get in a rally car. And of course, it is straddled with information displays aplenty, from a boost gauge to your average miles per gallon, anything you would need in a right mix of an absolute hooligan and an economy hatchback. But once your gaze shifts from what's in front of you to the middle it's a little bit disappointing for me because this has as standard an eight inch touchscreen infotainment system to put that plainly that's the same size screen you'd get not only in a corolla xse but in a base model 2025 camry now that's not a bad thing because it still has the toyota highlights infotainment system on board with a cloud-based navigation wireless carplay wireless android auto and even your own personal toyota assistant now if the tech may be a little bit woeful you add on the additional $1,200 technology package like again I have on this car and suddenly you now get a wireless charger under the dash and an eight speaker JBL audio system. Now JBL has been pretty good over the years but in a small little car like this even a small amount of speakers can still make one big difference. <laughs> While playing race car driver and listening to your favorite tunes always sounds like a fun time, admiring the rest of the details aside from the screen is again a little bit of a downer. But again, this is a Corolla and I have to give it the benefit of the doubt. The single zone climate control system does everything you want. Fan speed, auto AC, your temperature controls, and minuscule little buttons that are the same width as my pinky finger make up ways to either keep warm or keep cool. Moving down, aside from the wireless charger and heated seat controls, you've got your drive mode trigger, which is again about the same size as the climate control buttons, and then you get to that all important six speed manual, which like I said, is one of the most beautiful transmissions I've ever had the pleasure of rowing my own gears with. Moving back a little bit further, you have the all-wheel drive control, as I mentioned on the test drive, and then you get to <laughs> what is an absolute necessity, a manual e-brake with a thick leather-wrapped handle. Now, I could only imagine the heartbreak to most of this car's fans if this thing had an electronic parking brake. Just absolutely unnecessary to put stuff like that in here. And what's also kind of unnecessary, but slightly interesting, is the fact there's nothing to rest my arm on. But I guess the e-brake will do for that. Of course, the benefits to these little pocket rockets don't just stop with their heart-pounding performance, let alone with some of the features and technology you might get for your money. They can also be pretty practical, as we've already seen with the cargo space in the back of this hatchback here, and they can also, in some cases, be pretty comfortable should you decide you don't want to be the only one on your journey. But the key word there is in some cases, because every Corolla hatchback I've been in, GR or not, has had some of the worst legroom should you be a taller rear occupant like myself at over six feet tall. Now, sitting behind the driver's seat with it in the same place as I would feel comfortable as a driver, my knees are buried thoroughly through the back of that seat and almost reaching around to the front. Not exactly the most ideal situation. I do have at least a decent bit of headroom though because the rear headliner is indented, so I guess that's a plus. Also, it is a bit bare bones in terms of the creature comforts you get should you want to be crammed in here either like a sardine or at least somewhat tightly. You have 
four cup holders back here, one in each door, and you also get a nice little pair hidden here in the center armrest. But if you need to charge your phone per se, well, there is a USB-C at the back of the center console and even a cigarette lighter style plug in which you can fit I guess more USB add-ons because, well, electronics just, they come by the dozens nowadays, don't they? Now, would I say overall that I would be a backseat passenger in one of these with myself as a driver? That's a no from me. And on that note, everyone, it is time to very sadly conclude our review and test of the 2023 Toyota GR Corolla. Now, as a man who has never driven all of these hyped up modern day hot hatchbacks, this thing is one hell of a benchmark. Yes, it may not have as much heritage to go behind its name or at least the modern iteration of it. Some of its competition might even be more powerful or more practical, etc. But I feel like Jeremy Clarkson right now. I am a broken man. I don't have over $40,000 to spend on this particular model here, but I have to have one. At some point in my life, I have to have a GR Corolla in my life. But anyways, guys, if you've enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it, give this video a thumbs up. And also while you're at it, hit the subscribe button down below, because trust me, nothing like this would ever exist without partnerships like Toyota USA and Gazoo Racing and subscribers and viewers like yourselves. But in the end of it, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you all in the next one. Take care, everybody. And stay safe.